Hey there, Nicole Frost of Frost Yarn. I'm really excited to show you my process for the micro speckling. And we're doing a little contest in my masterclass dye group on Facebook where we share our process, do a knit swatch, and try to create this effect. in dyeing. So what I've done is first I consult my dye bible and if you don't have one of these I suggest everyone make it. But what I have available for sale if you don't want to buy every color from every line are these die cards and they're for seven different brands and you can get the pdf in my website uh, www.frostyarn.com and you can have them printed and laminated anywhere at your local print shop and it's very affordable at $20 and it's seven full dye lines. Moving on, the colors that I think will best work are Black from Prochem, Midnight from Dharma, Spearmint Breeze from Dharma, Fluorescent Orange from Dharma, Violet from Dharma, and Lily Rose from Aljo. Now, the reason I picked those colors is because they speckle fairly well and they don't break into their component parts. I don't want to use a color like, say, fluorescent pink, or I'm sorry, fluorescent purple pop from Dharma because I will have very distinct blue speckles with like a halo or a margin around them of hot pink. And so we're going to go downstairs and I'm going to show you how I shrink the diameter of the speckle so that we get these teeny tiny little speckles like in the reference image um, because some of the dyes the consistency of the powder is very very over milled very fine and it will drop in a blotch and we won't get a cute speckle so we want all the speckles to have the same margin and diameter so I'm going to show you how we do that. So I got these from a restaurant supply and they're just salt and pepper shakers but I wanted them to have a good number of small holes and the world's tiniest funnel and this is some fine sea salt you don't want rough chunky salt you want the salt to be really small again I got it from Websterant here in the US so we're gonna fill that and you want it to be equal amounts of salt and dye so this is the lily rose from Aljo pouring that in do that now I'm just going to cover it with my thumb and mix the dye and the salt up. And I look at it, and I don't know if you can see that, but I need just a little bit more salt so that I can get, let me get a different spoon. Um, a, like a, I'm doing this by eye because I want to make sure that I have it very well mixed and all of the dye is adhered to the sides of the uh, salt. Now the fun part, speckling. So when we look at the picture, I see that the speckles look kind of random, but if I think to the way they knit across, I don't want to speckle the whole thing with every color. I think it'll be really overwhelming. So I'm going to speckle in order, in this order, so it'll be fluorescent orange, aljo's, lily rose, and then um, the blue, the midnight blue, and the green into the black. So, <clears throat> first things first, we want a really low water table, lower than this. So I'm gonna take this out, dump out the excess water. If you don't have a proofer like I do, an oven is your best bet. If you don't have an oven, a vegetable steamer and some plastic wrap. The other thing I noticed is that there's no real back bleed and I want to get good even speckle coverage so I'm just sort of opening up the skein so that I can get as many strands as possible. And I don't want any back bleeding. So let's do this and like this as much as possible. All right, now I'm going to take the orange and we're just gonna do the smallest amount. And then we're going to do the pink on either side of that. And pink, yes, okay. And we're gonna do, ooh, that looks 
looks like a lot. And remember, these are going to grow once we get them wet. So we actually want significantly less. You want to put about a third of the number of speckles you ultimately want on with the expectation that they will grow. Now I'm going to go a little bit of black on these white in between sections because I saw quite a bit of black and dark in the piece. Same with a little bit more of this blue, but just like concentrated in a small area. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now, the most important part, I think, is fixing the speckles in place with citric acid water. Um, this is just something I do with all of my speckles, and I find that it allows them, like if there's a clump, it sort of dissolves it. So but not too much, and you want a mist, not a jet. You know, when I look at this, I can already see that I actually need a little bit more of the pink color, and probably a tiny bit of orange over here. I'm just remembering the way it looks in my head. We'll do a little bit there, and there, and there. Okay, now I'm just going to put a lid on this. And I'm going to heat set this probably, I want it at temperature for a half an hour. I'm going to let it cool to room temperature, rinse, and we'll come back when the yarn is done and we're ready to knit it. I forgot one more thing. So, if you want to have just like these ready to speckle at any given time and you work with like bain maries or steamers that make your dye space steamy, you need to put the, these in a Loctite container like this because the moisture in the air from using steamers of any kind is going to get moisture inside of here and it will make all of this dye powder and salt become one solid cake, a brick. So if you want to like only mix one of these once and then put the name of the dye on it and continue to use it and you have a wet space, just put them in something that moisture can't get in. Otherwise, these will become unusable within a couple days because of the ambient moisture getting inside. So pro tip. Here we have the finished swatch, which I think we can all agree is definitely more speckles than the original. So let me, let me get really close here. You see this color? This is the lily rose and you can see that it back bled. Another thing, we've got some haze right here and that is from this color, which is the midnight blue. And there's no yellow in the original photo, but you can see tiny bits of yellow, and that's because the fluorescent orange is actually just a mixture of pink and yellow dye. Dharma told me that they mix those two dyes together, and so you can see them striking in their component parts. So in the future, I would use obviously a different orange that doesn't strike like this, probably persimmon from Dharma. I would have heated this yarn up and had it at temperature. I speckled it cold. To prevent this back bleeding, you really want to speckle it when it's at temperature so you don't give it time to sort of get wet and migrate. But other than that, it is super cute and I will be repeating this experiment again for sure. I hope you found that informative and if you're so inclined, consider buying me a $3 coffee. It allows me to purchase dye and supplies and continue to teach freely available information to the public. My link to my Ko-Fi is in the description. Thank you.